Hi guys, uh, just editing the video at the moment. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to warn you there's a lot of camera shaking in this one. I didn't realize at the time that I shook the camera so bad, so the next one's going to be better. So just try and uh, put up with it. I've tried to hide it as much as I can. Uh, so, yep, on with the video. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I just want to let you guys know how we're doing on the velocity build. So, let's have a look. We're working on the landing gear at the moment. What we need to uh, install this and to fix it into place are these things here. So these guys are the gear saddles. Now, Velocity do send you gear saddles uh, already made. However, you have to make them better. So what that involves is putting uh, an extra eight layers of triax over the top of this one, which they supply. And there's two of them. Now, what they do, they sit and hold the gear leg up. Um, these guys are supposed to slide in a little bit further. Now, I'm currently working on getting these guys a little bit further in, so I do need to grind a bit off. So, on this one, you can see here, um, looks like it's completely busted or ground away, but uh, that's how it's supposed to be because uh, under here it gets pretty close that duct there is is almost touching the gear leg uh, well it all depends on where you put this hole of course to pass the gear legs through now there's a template they give you for that I'll just show you the template so the templates here this this line here represents the cowling cut line so uh, that would be this line here you're supposed to sit the piece of paper over that and then cut your hole. Now, this hole, this section here, is a lot smaller than the gear leg. At first I thought it was probably going to be a really good idea to cut the hole as small as possible so the gear leg only just gets into the hole. Uh, that went to custard as soon as I realized that the middle of the gear leg is much wider than the outer bits of the gear leg so at least on one side you're going to have to make your hole a lot bigger than uh, the other side so i was reading another builder's uh, weblog uh, of his build he notes in there that these holes actually need to be a lot bigger than uh, the gear legs anyway because what happens is when the gear uh, it all gets supported basically through um, there's a big bolt that passes through this hole here and it passes out the back of the firewall here so that bolt sits over the top of the gear leg here and so what happens is that's actually the fixed point now the whole gear leg is designed to uh, expand to take the loads of landing so uh, they kind of they'll open out a little bit now when they open out you're gonna have to have some clearance here so just to actually make sure that you don't the gear leg doesn't impact the fuselage here and start it cracking so you actually want some clearance there anyway uh, if you ever are going to make your own velocity with a fixed gear then don't worry about the hole okay just just cut a hole and then i've spent uh, a fair few hours just trying to get these holes shaped big enough uh, so i can get the right lean on the legs this is one thing i was quite unsure about the actual leg, it leans forward. It, it does, it's not straight up and down, but uh, it's actually got to go on a, just a horrible angle like that. It looks really freaky. I, I think it's got something to do with uh, shock absorption. You know, if you're landing on a bit of a uh, potholey runway or bumpy runway, that are actually uh, takes a bit more of the impact loads rather than uh, transferring it into a, a twisting motion it, but but anyway 
that's what I'm working on at the moment, trying to get that gear leg up forward, as well as trying to get these gear saddles put in uh, into the right position. Now, I'd like to talk about the center spar. I did start the center spar earlier on, and I was going to do that before I did the gear legs, simply because in the manual, the center spar comes before the gear legs. However, I was reading John Trautenbold's Trautenbold? Trautenbold, you idiot. Web page about his build log, and he laments the idea of having to do it the other way around. So he at first put his center spar on, and then he's put his uh, landing gear in, and he had a little bit of trouble with it. He had to get a couple of mates around to lift the uh, lift the bum of the airplane up, but um, he got it done anyway. So uh, I didn't want to have to go through that hassle. So I've I've sort of left the center spar off at the moment. It's all aligned. Um, there's three ways you actually got to align it. So I might actually get the center spar on and you guys can have a look. All right, so here's the center spar in place. Now, as you can see, it takes up a lot of room. So that's another reason I decided not to install it now. What you got to do, you just got to get it level. Um, you also got to make sure your plane is level. So the way I did that was um, I just set the whole thing on the floor um, and then measured the distance from each end of the wing spar to the ground and adjusted my height of my gear pockets. So these guys here, where the gear sit, uh, when the where the center spar sits on, um, all I did was I added a couple of layers of bi-directional here and uh, and uh, just lifted it up. It's probably about two millimeters. The other thing I had to do was adjust the sweep. So I had to bring this far end over here a little bit more forward and this end was probably, it could come back a little bit more, but it can't. So I just had to bring the uh, the other side forward. And also I noticed there was a little bit of a, let's grab that. There's also a little bit of a, a you've got to find this level here too. So you want to make sure that's on vertical, straight up and down. But what I found was on this guy, so if that one was 90, this one's half a degree off. So that means there's a little bit of twist in the wing spar. Now in the manual they say if that occurs, then you split the difference. So what I've had to do was make one wing point up and one wing point down. Uh, it doesn't sound real good to me, um, but uh, I, I guess a quarter of a degree either way, I don't know if it's going to make much difference. Also, I had to adjust the sweep a little bit. So the way I've done that, just put that up. so I've had a little put. I've had to stick a little bit of a spacer down there. Okay, that was basically to bring the top out a little bit. And I've also had to put a little bit of a on the other side. You might have noticed it earlier. There was a bit of a, 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 what, a tongue depressor on that side. That was just to assist it to roll forward. So it probably still needs a little bit of rolling forward to do, but uh, I'll deal with that later. But right now, as you can see in the workshop, it you got to constantly duck underneath it. So this will be one of the few last things that I can do before we actually put the, um, the top of the plane on, before we put this one on. So that's pretty much all I've got going on with the wing spar at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I put a lot of work into it, but yeah, we can't bond it in yet. And the other thing I've been working on at the moment is the winglets. Now, first thing you'll notice is I've installed the comm antennas into them. So we're going to have two comm antennas. Uh, so that I guess that means we run two radios. Uh, or one is redundant. I'm not sure how that works, but we'll do two anyway because it's pretty easy. Now, from the factory, these guys came pretty damaged, and also the hot wire cutting they did was pretty shabby. The way I've had to fix that was I had to do a fair bit of filling on this leading edge. 
There was a big scoop cut out from the hot wire, so I had to fill that in with a bit of uh, Velocipoxy and Micro. There's also these ribs here. I've filled them in for now. I, I probably didn't need to. I probably could have just sanded them back. I did that on the other one here. So I just sanded it so all this is smooth. It's pretty easy to sand foam. This one here, I've just still got to sand back. But I think this one's right to go. The way they're sort of stuffed up is they didn't... This cut here at the trailing edge, that wasn't quite long enough. So it was kind of... So what I had to do, I basically just had to cut a section off and just replace it with another piece of foam. Uh, and also here, um, just had to replace this. Now, apparently this bit here gets cut off anyway, but the first layer of glass needs to come over the top of it. And then this gets cut off, gets sanded flat, and then the second layer that goes on the other side gets bonded to it on the underside. Had to add a little bit of foam here just so we've got something for the glass to run over and onto. They suggest leaving the, the, the winglet in its foam core, so in, uh, in the billet. It's, it's kind of a good idea because it holds it all in place. I've just put some marks and lines on here so I can see exactly where it needs to be seated when I do glass it. That'll be pretty soon, hoping to do that today. So there you are guys, that's how we're going. Uh, it's going forward, um, just having a fix some little stuff up on the way and just trying to put some effort into getting things right so um, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing more of this because it probably won't show up if you don't subscribe so um, yeah we'll let you know how we go with the legs with the wing spar eventually and how we go with the winglets um, once we get the winglets put together I'll be very keen to put them on the end of the wings and uh, that'll probably be another video, I'm sure. All right, see you later. Bye.